Welcome to the Hyper Fast Agent Podcast. I am so excited to have the Nick Baldwin here with us today. Nick is one of the most epic real estate agents, and I'm serious about this, has created influence like I've never seen another agent do before. So Lab Code Agents, 90,000 real estate agents are part of your group. Let's just start by talking about that. And then I want to hear about the team that you've built. You moved to a new market. You're building a team. I mean, incredible success story. Well, that's just a little bit of pressure, Carrie. Just a little <laughs> bit of pressure, by the way. I'm the most epic agent ever and the most influential. Just a little pressure. Um. No, so yeah, so recently I moved from New Jersey to Michigan, back to my wife's hometown, and of course it was scary because that's like an agent's worst nightmare, right? Like moving from a market that you grew up in and that you became an expert in and that you have a sphere of influence in and that your business is thriving in to a market that you have no idea about, right? Yeah, it's like terrifying. Like, I'm sure people who are watching right now are like, oh my God, if that happened to me, yeah. I would lose it, right? Yeah, right, exactly. So... But you know, it's 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 not as scary as you think because while every market's different, we're in we're in a relationship business. Yeah. So it's really all about relationships, it's all about getting involved in the community, it's about hiring the right people around you. It's like it's about implementing the right models and systems. So I had a team in New Jersey and I took that model and that system and moved it over to Michigan and Luckily, it worked uh, the same. It actually worked better in the Michigan market. Um, so it's just really all about taking what you learned in that original market and implementing it in a new market. Because really, if the model if the model is good, it's going to work anywhere. Okay. So help help everybody understand this. You make the decision, and you arrive in your new hometown. And what are the steps that you took at that point? So luckily when I, well, first of all, I took a job at, I took a job as a team leader in a Keller Williams market center. Um, and that market center happened to be in my wife's hometown. If it wasn't in my wife's hometown, I probably wouldn't have made the, made the move, but I knew that's where she wanted to be. So I decided this was a good move for us. And so luckily I had relationships with agents in that area because I had referred um, business to them. And one of the agents that I referred business to actually sold my in-laws home. And then when we moved out there, she actually helped us purchase the home nice. that we bought in Michigan. So when I moved out there and I decided to start my own real estate team, she was the first person I went to to run the team. Awesome. So I had built up these relationships and I knew she was the right fit. And so I knew that by hiring her, you know, the team would be in good hands. That's really cool. So you already had vetted her because you'd personally experienced her on the buy side and the sell side at that point. Exactly. Yeah. So I was confident. Okay. I mean, listen, it hasn't been easy. It's a new team. So it's a startup, but we're doing well. We're on track to do 22 million in 84 transactions. And I think in the first year of a team, I mean, I, I don't know, but I that's, think that's pretty good. That's awesome. Yeah. That's really cool. So then... One of the problems that I can imagine is lead generation, right? Because if you're coming into a new market, you're not tapping your SOI in the same way, and it is a relationship business. So what are the pillars of lead generation that you guys are doing to accomplish those insane results so quickly? Okay, so it's interesting. So the two people that I hired on my team are, are the, the, the agent that represented us in the sale of our home and the purchase of our home, and then I hired the agent that was the listing agent on the home. <laughs> right? I told you you're influential. Yeah. I mean, so hundred percent. So when ratio. you get, yeah. So when you get people who are already in the business in that market to form a team with, they have a sphere of influence. Right. So a lot, not a lot. I, I can't, I can't think of the exact numbers right now, but we are doing business from their past clients where in fact, about to do our first client event at the end of March for March Madness. It's called March Madness Ma and Mario Kart. Sorry, Mario Kart. My Italian <laughs> wife always corrects me. I always say Mario. She says Mario. So Tomato, tomato. Yeah, so I don't have any past clients in Michigan, but they do. Right. 
And so we're inviting them and introducing them to the new team. Now, the lead generation we're doing is expires and Fizbos, and then, um, and then Y Lopo, so Facebook ads. Yeah. And so that's the most scalable business model, in my opinion, with Y Lopo, because our cost per lead is around three to five dollars. And yes. so if you're going to scale a business and start a team in another market, Facebook is the way to go. So that's where most of our opportunities are coming from. Nice. Yeah. Okay. And what is the biggest key to your success in converting those leads? All about the follow-up and all about the consistent lead generation. Yeah. My agents are on the phones every day from 9 to 12, okay. Monday through Friday. Uh, we also have a virtual ISA that is nurture, that is making the initial contact right off the bat. Um, but regardless of that, it's all about being on the phones and being consistent. And that's what they're doing every single day. And that's where the appointments are coming from. Okay. And how do you hold them accountable to that when they're the ones that have the past clients? Like what, what was the appeal that you got them to join the team and feel like, wow, I really want to partner with Nick. Besides right, so, your amazing influential Oh spirit. my gosh. <laughs> so it's all about the value proposition. Yeah. Right. So I, I have... I, I don't want to say shiny objects, but I do have shiny objects. Like I have things that work. I have a great CRM. I have a great Facebook lead generation platform. And I have great tools that my agents have access to that would normally cost them thousands of dollars a month, a year for that, for that matter. And so that along with the consistent coaching yeah. makes it, makes it something that's appealing. So when I was when I was talking to them initially, I said, you know, what's the what's the one thing you want from me, right? Like, all of these things aside, all of these shiny objects. Because shiny objects don't close deals unless you know what you're doing. Right. I said, what's the one thing you want from me? And they said, we want coaching and training. And so yeah. I was like, well, that's it. They're like, yeah, that's all we want because that's everything. And so we're holding them accountable. They have to make a hundred contacts a week. They have to set a minimum. I'm an appointment a day. Like if they set an appointment at 10 o'clock, obviously they don't stop, but they can't leave that room until an appointment is set. Nice. Um, and they have GCI goals. And so, you know, I'm just consistently, and they don't get to leave until, like I said, they don't get to leave till that appointment is set. So they're and, hungry. They and, go and, and, and by the way, just, and if for, and, and, and with lead generation, that's their first job. So like if for some reason an appointment pops up at 11 o'clock and they don't get to do that extra hour of lead gen, if you erase it, you replace it. So you do it later in the day or you do it on the weekend. It has okay. to be done or else you're going to lose the momentum. Yeah. Yeah. That makes total sense. And plus, sense. I mean, I think I'm a pretty nice guy. That's a value proposition, right? <laughs> I don't know. Well, you're, My you're Rainmaker doing... Sunshine is here, so she might have something else to say about that, but who knows? <laughs> What you're doing is working, right? And there's a lot of agents out there that are struggling and they can't figure out how to make their systems work. And you obviously have a formula that is working and helping them grow. So well, here's huge. the funny thing. So I've been in the business a dozen years and it wasn't really until like three or four years ago where I really started to feel like I was getting it. And by the way, you're never, you never get it completely. Cause there's you're always, always more yeah. to learn and it's changing, right? Oh, all the like, Technology is changing so fast. Yes. And so I'm always trying to keep on top of what the newest and best tech is. And everyone's coming. Hey. <laughs> Tristan's crashing the party. All right. I lost my train of thought. Um, tech, changing. Tech. Like staying on tech top is always of changing, what's new. Staying on top of what's new. Always trying new things. A-B testing. You know, scripting, role playing. Um, follow up. You know, uh nurturing how many texts is too many texts how many calls is too many calls yeah you know there's no such thing as too much follow-up but if someone says wow you've just called me way too many times i think we're gonna dial it back a little bit you know but like how do you calibrate to meet the client's needs ex really, yeah no yeah. exactly you have to but what, oh what i was saying was that even though i've been in the business a dozen years i really feel like over the last three or four years is when i started to kind of figure more of it out and kind of get my stride. Yeah. Um, and I wasn't treating it like a business before. Yeah. And once I started to treat it like a business, um, everything, everything changed. So, 
That's awesome. That's the one downfall for agents. They don't treat it like a business. Absolutely. Know? Even what you're talking about, having a plan and a schedule and holding them accountable to that to make them successful, that's huge. And so for me, it's hard. Like, I have so many squirrels. Like, you just saw people come in. I'm in the middle of talking. I'm like, hey, squirrels everywhere. Yep. So it's they're also holding me accountable to doing what I need to do. And in, and in turn, I'm doing it the, the same for them. So we're holding each other accountable. Well, one of the major advantages that I can see for agents on your team is that you're learning. I mean, Lab Cut Agents enables people to learn. That's the mission of it, right? To, to collaborate I mean, it is the across mission. the yeah. country. And you're doing that every day and learning from the brightest and the best. So let's talk a little bit about your vision there. Sure. And when you started it, did you ever imagine 90,000 agents would be following you and actively engaged? So... No, because Tristan, my co-founder in Lab Coats, um, we met through a mutual friend. His name is Steve Pastinelli. And um, he introduced us via Facebook. And Tristan had this small group with like 700 people called Lab Coat Agents. And they were just sharing best practices. And he introduced us. He's like, hey, Tristan, this is Nick. You guys should know each other. That was basically it. And so I joined this group. And Tristan and I just started sharing things in the group. And next thing I know, we were at 5,000 members, then 10, then 20, then 30, now 91. And it's really two things. We got really, we got in on the ground level of groups. Yeah. So before groups really took off. But it goes to show you that content and value is king. Yeah. And people are joining because they're getting all of that. And unfortunately, you got your you got your trolls because it's the internet. But yeah. It has given us a really good insight to the mindset of an agent. And so our mission now is to just get that mindset to be more business oriented and to focus on what what's important. Yeah. Because so many of them just dwell on things that don't matter and it affects their business. Absolutely. So. It brings them down. Yep. Oh, for sure. It's horrible. Yeah. Yep. So if there were one lesson or observation that you would have for people watching today that may find themselves in that negative mindset at times, what would it be? That's a really good question because this business is so up and down. I mean, we're in a commission-based business. We're in a sales business. And the market's always changing. Yeah. But I get I get I get into I get it I find myself getting into negativity. And basically I just give myself like a 5-minute funeral for my negativity. I love that. A 5-minute yeah. funeral. And it's been a real struggle for me to just forget about it because my downfall is I, I tend to pay attention. Not I don't pay attention, but I listen too much to what other people are saying and doing. And when I catch myself doing that, I just need to like take deep breaths. Like I said, have that five minute funeral, let myself be upset for a minute. But then think about why you're really doing this. You know, think about, I, for me, I think about my kids, my family, you know, my house. Like my kids ask me, why are you going to work, daddy? Why are you going to work? I say, well, daddy has to go to work to make money because if I don't have money, we can't buy toys. And toys are their big why, <laughs> right? And my big why is them. So when I say that, they get it, right? I just had that conversation when I was leaving to come here. Yeah. And mine was toys and donuts. Yeah. Mommy, well, listen. Mommy has to work for the monies because if you keep wanting the monies. donuts. The monies. <laughs> and toys. You got to get the monies for yeah, the toys. You got to get the monies. So basically for me, the negativity, like I said, it's okay to let things bother you. But, I, but I'm saying agents get negative about things that are out of their control. Yeah. If something's out of your control, you just have to deal with it and let it go. So you just, you can't control the things that you can't control. Right. So just, if a deal's falling apart, 
and you can't control it, it what's whatever's going to happen is going to happen. There's going to be another sale. So well, and if you let that bring you down for the entire day, instead of having the five minute funeral and moving on, think of all of the other opportunity that you're missing out on because you're stuck in this negative cycle. And by the way, if you're letting one deal bring you down, you need to think bigger and you need to think like a business person. Yeah. Because if one deal is bringing you down, you need more. You yeah. Know. Well, and another thing you said, you focus on your why. Yeah. When you get in that moment, what it allows Nick to have the five minute funeral and move on is he's really clear on why he's doing what he was doing and what his vision is, right? Yeah. So when you get back to that, it makes it easy to move to the positive side. So I would say my biggest advice for anyone watching is get clear on your why. And if that's something you're struggling with, go find people who have gone through that struggle. I personally have. I remember being at a Tony Robbins event and sobbing because I realized I had lost my vision. This is just a few years ago. I already had a big team, but we accomplished the goal we set out to accomplish and I didn't know what was next, right? So anybody who you know that has a really clear vision, help the ask them for help recalibrating your why because then the negative mindset is going to move quickly when you have it to what you want and what you're going to create and if you live there that's so positive also i would say like the one piece of advice i would give to agents honestly is like you have to have someone to hold you accountable to what you're supposed to be doing on a daily basis whether it's a coach a lot of agents can't afford a coach don't get a coach just get someone that you can check in with daily and say, today, this is my goal, right? And then the next day, okay, I hit my goal or I didn't hit my goal. And then what your goal is for that day. Yeah. And they're gonna tell you. So you just need that accountability partner. And if you can, find someone like Carrie. Call Carrie, She's, she'll pick up. <laughs> have someone who, you, who can mentor you and give you advice. You know, it's, it's good to have those people in your life when you're feeling down so they can refocus you on, on, on where you need to go. Absolutely, on our team we have buddies. Oh, and buddies, that's a good idea. Yeah, because yeah. a lot of times if they're having a similar struggle, sometimes it's great to partner with somebody who's having a similar struggle so you can focus on it, but sometimes it's really important to find someone who has really succeeded and knocked it out of the park at your goal. So as an example, if you were trying to lose weight, partnering with another person trying to lose weight would not be the right solution, right? You would want to find somebody who's absolutely fit. They know the right activities and they love and care for you. So they're going to give you the tough love when you need it. I think real estate is similar, right? There's times where if one person's really good at prospecting and the other is really good at converting in person, they need to swap skills and hold each other accountable to raising the bar. Yeah, that's a, that's very good advice. You're right. You're right. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I, I hope I did okay. You did amazing. I would like to ask anyone who's not involved in lab code agents, get involved. There are so many opportunities to learn. In fact, you guys just interviewed someone tonight who is an Instagram rock star. Yeah, right? so Tristan actually interviewed an agent uh, named Tessa Bella. I'm forgetting. Tessa Bella Gel. Oh man, I'm forgetting your last name. Just go but to Instagram and type in Tessa, Tessa Bella. Bella. But you need two A's. Tessa? Tessa Bella. Bella. I think she's got like twelve or 13,000 followers, but she's really engaging and gets really high engagement. And she has a whole curriculum on, on how, to, um, how to tackle Instagram at a high level. Um, so that was huge. But also, check out labcodeagents.com because it's a website totally free. It's written by agents for agents. There's like five or 600 blogs and webinars on there written by agents in the trenches every single day doing it and lab code agents on Facebook. So good stuff. Yeah, you guys have to do it. And we have an event coming up for lab code agents in. Oh man, Bless I just you. sneezed. I just sneezed on camera. Bless you. You're all right. Okay. Um, we have an event coming up in San Diego. I was right? trying to hold that sneeze in. I Is it San Diego? Do. Oh. Yes, yeah, so we have LCA Live, which is our big two-day event. San Diego, right now it's looking like it's going to be end of June. We're about to solidify dates. Uh, and then we're going to be in uh, Detroit for a one-day event because I'm in the Detroit area. And then you're in, we're going to Portland. 
right? Portland, Oregon in July, and, and we're then, looking at dates in D.C. as well, right? Yeah, D.C. Yeah. So we're doing a lot of one-day events. Like today, we're here for an event in Atlanta, and we just had one last month in St. Louis. Then we got the big two-day event in San Diego, and then another big day, big one-day event in Detroit. It's gonna, this is gonna be we're lots gonna, of fun. We're gonna blow your minds, guys. We're gonna bring together so Huge. much talent Huge. to make sure that you're continuing to push your business to the next level. All right, guys, thanks so much for joining us. And Nick, thank you for being here. Thank you, Carrie. It was lovely. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up, hit that like button, leave us some comments. We want to know your feedback and share this with someone that you think could benefit as well. And if you want to see more great videos, click this playlist up here, or better yet, click right here to subscribe and turn on post notifications so you don't miss any of our updates.